Do you guys remember the E36 N54 finale video? Well, I do. And let me tell you something. I am sorry. I apologize. It was embarrassing. There was no traction on any of those finale videos and you guys were left hanging and I'm sorry about that. Today we're going to be rectifying that by installing a three clutch system on this limited slip module. We're going to be taking the diff out, we're going to be taking the LSD system out, and we're going to be replacing those discs and figuring out why we were on one wheel of traction the entire time. And we might even uh, you know, do a couple runs. Guys, you don't want to miss this one. We got a lot of cool stuff coming up. Let's get this puppy in the garage. the underbody. Seems like there's a little bit of work in order to access the diff. There's one bolt there, one bolt there. We got our half shaft bolts, the speedo sensor, a bolt on the front, and then your drive shaft. So um, we got all these that we need to remove and then the whole drive uh, differential should basically come down and over. Somebody looks like maybe jacked it up back in, in the, the day. <laughs> And we got to drop the exhaust too, of course, uh, in order to access some of these things. So, um, yeah, so let's do that in a really quick time lapse. Just get this thing out and on the table. Man, nothing. You're supposed to. So, for, for a limited slip diff, when you spin the wheel, um, one of the, any of the, one of the two wheels, the other one should also spin in the same direction. That's how you know it's limited slip right off the bat. But in here, it's not even moving. So, that might not be good then, because it might not be the clutches. It might be, yeah, it definitely would be the clutches. But we'll see. That might be the actual LSD unit. We'll take it apart and we'll see what, what's going on with it. We'll see what's going on, because this thing needs a limited slip. No doubt about it. So the problem is, is that when you turn one of these sh output shafts, the other one should spin with it, right? And we demonstrated with the car, with, you know, uh, actually on the car, that one wheel spinning and one wheel was doing nothing. And now we can kind of see why. This is correct. This motion is correct, right? This is the way it should be. But the second you give it a little bit more torque, or if Ben holds it with the other hand, you'll see easily. So we're gonna focus on this. We're gonna get this thing all laid out. We're gonna do, take the limited slip unit out and we're going to lay it out. But let's talk about the bushings really quick. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Did you want to explain the bushings? Oh, yeah, oh, full okay. cure of the bolt. Oh. Um, uh, Connor Speed Shop um, poly bushings for the differential and went with their kit that includes the large bolt upgrade. Um, just heard many stories of the differential bolt breaking. Must be on the front yeah, side, right? These are, this, is a good, this is a good upgrade. Uh, thanks to Condor for providing these. These two are for the rear, on the rear ears of the diff uh, cover right there. And then this guy is the main front cover, the, the main front bushing that needs to be pressed in. So let's first press, press this out so we can make sure that we can push the new one in. All right, so the old bushing is pressed out. And the new bushing is a Delrin uh, bushing, needs to be pushed in. It's basically really, really close proximity, um, really good. I mean, I think it's gonna work out perfectly, but this guy has to get pushed in and we're gonna end up using our uh, the same puller in order to, to kind of get it right in place. <laughs> with the uh, with the insert. the insert at the same time because it was such a close fit that the outer diameter will end up shrinking to conform to the diameter of the the 
um, its mate. Yeah, so I wanted to. Yeah. That in yeah. Afterwards. Yeah, and now and now I know that that was the right choice because it's pretty it's pretty much in there now. So that's good. All right, front bushings ready. Let's do the two rear bushings. Now that the bushings are out of here and we took taking care of all the bushings, we'll press these guys in pretty easily. We gotta work on the limited slip. So here's the deal, right? This whole unit with the reluctor ring, with the limited slip unit and the ring gear need to come out. Now they're currently being held in place by these end caps, these six bolts here and six bolts here. So we need to remove those, but before we do that, we need to remove the half shafts. And do you know how to remove the half shafts? Sure. Okay, good. <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do this one, you do the other one, ready? There's one, do the other one. There we go. Now the half shafts basically come right on out. Set them aside. And now we use a 13 millimeter to bolt, unbolt these, and then these guys also pop out. And then now this, you have to be careful when you're removing these two because they're both pressure shimmed and, uh, and pressure set to hold this in place. So when you remove both of those, this is essentially just gonna drop. So we kind of have to hold it and cradle it like a little baby so that when you remove these, you have something to hold this onto and then you can just take this out as if you're delivering your first child. A little baby, a little ring baby, a little limited slip baby. All right, so let's, uh, let's do a time lapse and get to that point and set this little baby limited slip right on this table. All right, so we have these eight bolts. I think that they're six, uh, six millimeter bolts. And these, are, these have been notorious um, for stripping. So you have to be really, really careful about, about removing them, especially if you don't have replacements during the day. So I started cleaning these off really good with the terry cloth towel. And I even used some lacquer thinner to get all the oil out of there because the, frick, the, the lubrication is not gonna really bode well for the tool getting into the hole. So after taking a look at it and starting to un 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 unscrew them, all these guys came out really, really easy. Like they're just spinning. So I don't know if that has something to do with the fact that the limited slip wasn't working at all. Maybe this wasn't tightened enough. I'm not sure, but um, these are gonna come out really easy and we're gonna be able to reuse them without a problem. So I'm really excited about that. So uh, we, we're on this website, uh, eeuroparts.com, and it's like a really great write-up. So we're basically following that to the T. Um, but yeah, basically it says take each part out and lay it down on the table in the order that you removed it. <laughs> and that's it. And then reassembly is just, you know, just basically reverse of the removal, you know. So we're going to see how to do this and how to remove it. Careful, careful. Oh. Well, the, the plate doesn't come up. <laughs> All right, we'll see how we do this. All right, we got the first um, dog, set of dog ears and clutch out, and you can see that, wow, look at the wear on that. These, th this basically is supposed to fit into these splines, and, uh, and it is worn out. Like, it basically just spins on it. Um, so really bad. So we're gonna keep our convention here of removing a piece, putting it down, removing the next piece, putting it down, putting it down, putting it down, and go from there. But I think we understand now why it's been so worn out. I mean, this is just, this is just unbelievable. So I, we gotta just keep on chipping away at this and just uh, take one piece at a time. Okay, we basically got it entirely disassembled one thing at a time like i said we got our spider gears right here um we have our this is our our one half of the um that's one half of the hypoid gear this is the other half of the hypoid gear and this is the other clutch disc as you can see 
that is just as worn out, if not more worn out. So that is the root cause of why this limited slip was not, not even behaving even close to what a limited slip should be. So now we've got our spacers and our shims and our dog ears and clutches kind of hanging out in new fluid and we just have to reassemble. Okay, so first are the three small washers with the diamond plate facing up. Next is the Bellevue washer with the small radius facing down and the large radius out, so it's kind of bowing out like that. Next is the first dog ear. Clean it up with brake cleaner. So dip it in. I'll get the next the clutch disc ready. We're sure of that order, right? Yep. Here's your disc. Okay. So, this stuff's from racing. Okay, next dog here, right? Next. Hope we're not wasting that much fluid. Go. Other disc. This is what the clutch disc look like, looks like. This is the dog ear and this is the clutch disc. You can't really, we're having a hard time separating them. We don't really even care. But this is just worn out, man. You can't even, it's not even touching. Next is, I believe, now we gotta do the spider gear, which is basically this guy. Yeah, that would make sense. It's the other half. Oops. <laughs> the whole thing that... You just dip it in. Yeah. There you go. And this guy goes in, just like. So I gotta make sure it gets into the discs. Oh, you gotta line up with that. Mm -hmm. All right, so everything's basically pretty much reassembled. We got two clutch discs with two dog ears underneath. Then we have our spider gear assembly. Then we have one more clutch disc and um, dog gear with its Bellevue washer here. Um, yep, so the radius is, is uh, the, the radius is actually pointing outward. The small radius bow is pointing outward, just like it's pointing downward or outward on the lower pieces. And now this is the final piece that goes on. And uh, let's see, throw it on there. Careful. And it's going to be a little high, right? When you put it in, it's gonna be a little bit high. And that's because you have all this um, compressed spring that is not quite compressed there. yet, right? So that's the level. Yep. You can see, look at that gap there still, right? The gap there is probably like a quarter inch of gap that, that all of the bolts are gonna end up compressing all of those washers um, together and, uh, and all of those spring washers together and, and that's what's really gonna allow it to give it that bite. This is a really well built diff. I'm really super excited to, to get this thing on the road. So let's, one, two, let's put these eight back on there and let's do a star pattern reassembly and uh, get it back in the diff. Okay, so we now got all the seals replaced on the back end. We're not gonna do anything on the input shaft today. Um, we got our shims installed, our new seals are all in there. Um, the uh, limited slip module is done, torqued all of these guys down to 26 foot-pounds or 35 Newton meters. And now this is kind of a two-man job. You can do it by yourself. It's a little bit, a little bit tricky though, but I'm gonna hold the unit in place as Ben installs that and then threads a couple of those bolts in. And I'll do the same on my, with my right hand on that side, just so we can get it in place. And then as you screw those, all of these um, bolts in, it kind of solidifies its location, um, you know, with the, with the input shaft and all, and all that. So what we'll do is basically do a time lapse of that and, uh, and get this thing installed and then get the rear cover on. So this paper gasket is going to end up going on the interface between the actual diff and the rear cover. But um, since there's so many different in undulations and you know we cleaned it up as best as we can, I think Ben did a really good job of cleaning it up. Um, I have a lot of good experience with 
this uh, forma gasket, this aviation forma gasket. It's a, it's like a really thick sludgy stuff. And you just put like just the thinnest coat around the outside. That's it. Just the tiniest little coat about of it. Just make sure that you get it everywhere and we'll do it on both sides. All right, just like that. And good. it does kind of smell good. But this is not, like, you can get this at like a Napa or, you know, the, uh, any type of like auto store, auto shop, or whatever. But, um, but this stuff really helps to seal all of those. The last thing you want is to do a paper gasket and have like, and have like my, you know, tiny little minute leaks. Um, that would really gonna kill you. I mean, I'm telling you, it's really annoying to have diff leaks. So this really goes a long way. A little bit of effort to go a long way to help seal it and prevent any leaks. So the last step in this diff upgrade for the E36 M3 is to upgrade, along with the Condor front differential bushing, is to upgrade to their larger size bolt, which is an M14 by 1.5 as opposed to the existing M12. So what we need to do is tap this, the larger M14 size, drill it out with a half inch drill bit or 12.5 millimeter, and tap it, get it on, and this thing is going back in the car. The car is done, it is on the ground, and we are ready for our first test drive. Whoa, man, that glare is especially bad today. Yep, still bad, who cares? We are gonna go for a quick drive and just see how this thing performs. I'm telling you, after looking at this and reevaluating and changing all of these things uh, inside the diff, I'm telling you, I'm really, really excited about taking a drive in this. Um, so yeah, so let's go, Ben. Start her up and let's back her out, huh? Been in this thing in a long time, huh? Crazy. <laughs> it's fast, man. Yeah. Right here? Yeah, you can go right here. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Oh. That'll get you going a little bit. <laughs> now it, it feels like a race car now, though. Like it, I'm not gonna lose traction when I just boom right down down a gear. Yeah, now it now yeah. it's fast and it and it has controlled, predictable, confident well, traction just, now. Just lose traction off one wheel whenever the whenever the power. <laughs> Damn. 
God damn. Oh yeah, you can see it there. You can see them both there. Reflecting in the sunlight. All right guys, that just about does it for me today. This is Ben Watson. This is his E36N54. I'm Frank Macaluso, and we are here to give you the best of the- Let me do it. Let me do it.